The purpose of today's video will show you how to create a COS account. CO stands for the Colorado Environmental Online Services Portal, where you could submit permit applications, update permits, chemical inventory reporting, and grant and loan applications. So to get started, you'll see the public login option on the right side here. Um, the third option down will be to create a new account. So if you don't already have an account associated with your email address, please click this. Then you'll be asked to enter your personal information. The username will autofill with the first letter of your first name as well as your last name. If this username is already taken, the system will give you an error, in which case you can always add to it. Make sure the email address that you're using is the one that you want to receive COS communication at. and certainly one that you have access to. Once you have all required fields, enter click Next. Then you'll be asked to select which type of account you want to create. Uh, the two options are preparer or responsible official. The preparer account is intended for those that want to prepare an application, but will not be the one signing or submitting it. This is generally a consultant or somebody within a company um, that will not be the legal responsible official on the application. The responsible official account is a little bit more robust and you'll be asked to submit or select your submittal group. I'll go ahead and use the clean water construction permit submittal group, but you can always select multiples if that will apply to your case. And we can change them down the line if needed, you'll just need to email. Then you'll be given the option to associate your facility. If this is a permitted facility, uh, be sure to use the exact facility name on your permit for it to show up. Or in the case of a COR 400,000, the if an RO owner or RO operator has already created the facility in the system, be sure to use the exact name of whatever they created. Use only the facility name field when searching. Less is more with this search. And then in production, also leave this drop down for registered, non registered blank. But for this demonstration, I have to search non registered. And then once you find your facility, select the select column as well as the type of submissions that you will be applying for at that facility. I went ahead and selected both in this case. And then click OK. You'll get a pop-up that that was accepted, and then you can close. So as you can see here, the two, the general permit and the stormwater permit were both uh, associated for this facility, the CDPHE test facility, and that the status is pending. That'll be important down the line. Um, pending means that you need to either complete an e-verify or an ESA, which I will get to. So once you've done that, cl click Next. Then you'll be asked to enter your security question answers. You can always change what questions you're being asked. And please make note of if you are capitalizing your answers or not. They are case sensitive. And your security question will be used as half of your digital signature when you go to submit. So you will need to know your answers. It'll only ask you one, but you won't know which one. And then you can also use them to reset your password if you don't know it down the line. Click Next and complete the CAPTCHA. And then you'll be given the option to proceed with E-Verify. That is our preferred route. You have the option between ESA or E-Verify, but it's going to direct you to E-Verify first. E-Verify is run through LexisNexis as an identity verification. Uh, you'll enter in all personal information, not company information. So whatever your address is on your driver's license typically works best. And then a phone number registered to you, as well as all of the other fields. Uh, if you choose to not complete E-Verify and would rather do the paper ESA instead, click Cancel. And then you'll see the options again to proceed with ESA or E-Verify. The ESA is an electronic subscriber agreement. 
and it's going to be a form that you download by clicking print subscriber agreement here and then once you download it you'll print it sign it and then scan it and email it in to the record center or mail it in to the address on the form that can take a few days to approve and it's an either or situation so if you would rather do the e-verify it's an instant approval and you would not need to do this agreement instead and even with the subscriber agreement you're still required to then complete the application within the system so it's not a paper route altogether it's just this form to get you set up in the system so that's it your account is now created you'll need to check the email that you provided for your login information it's going to give you a temporary password which I recommend you copy and paste directly from. It'll remind you of your username. And then once you log in, it's gonna ask you to set a new password. So that password it provided you was temporary. And once you add a new password, confirm it. and ask you for a new PIN. PIN is a four digit number that you will use as the other half of your digital signature. So save that, and then you're logged into CIOS. Uh, you have the option to either go and check your associated create facility list or create facilities or check what you've already associated, or you can go straight into your dashboard to see the status, which is what I'll go ahead and do here. Tell you the status of anything that you have pending or that you've already submitted. Um, in this case, I have not submitted or I have nothing pending. Um, you can also go to start a new application here. On the left-hand panel, panel, you'll see the options as well as under the submittal tab, start a new submittal. In this case, I'd like to point out that because we proceeded with the ESA, under the Associate Facilities page, you'll notice this pending status. Until that changes to active, you can't do any applications for that facility. Um, and that's going to be pending on that form that you filled out, the ESA. So that is your account. And once you've received email that you're active in CEOs and that your facility is active, you can go ahead and get started. But that is all there is to it. Uh, we can go into detail on how to Authorize preparers under this Manage Consultants and Preparers page. Change your password, update your security questions, and create or associate new facilities in future videos. But note, you will have to search a facility before you're given the option to create a new one. So once that search runs, you'll see the option to create new facility appear. If you have any questions, please send them to either one of the following email addresses. Thank you.